Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, welcome. Glad you're here. Should we do like statistics and stuff? Yeah, let's get into it. So if you're watching this video as part of a sequence, then the last video I talked about was basically just explaining what mixed models are. Now let's go into R and figure out how to model them. If you're not listening as part of a playlist, then I'm glad you're here and let's be friends. That was a fist bump, by the way. All right, let's get into R. Oh yeah, welcome to my R stream. Welcome to my R home. It's so nice of you to come. Thank you for bringing wine and we hope you enjoy the dinner party. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to install the package LME4. What does LME4 stand for? Um, linear Mixed Effects fourth version, maybe? I don't know. But uh, we're going to go ahead and install that. Uh, that was just asking me. It said, hey, you already have LME4 started. Do you want to restart R? And usually I go no because otherwise I get stuck in this loop. And if I see a message like this, I go yes. Uh, what is that message asking me? It's asking me, uh, it says, hey, there are two different versions. Which one do you want to install? I don't really care, so I just say yes. Um, so yeah, that's going to take a little bit because LME4 is kind of a big library. And while that's installing, I'm going to go ahead and delete that line. You don't have to. Um, you can comment it out. Why am I deleting it? Because every time I run the script, I don't want it to reinstall the package. That would be inefficient. So I'm just going to comment it out. But you can do whatever you want. Hey, it's your computer. I can't tell you what to do on your computer. Anyway, um, and that's going to take some time to load. So I'll just sit here and wait. Finished. All right, now that we got LME4 loaded, I'm sorry, installed, we're going to go ahead and require it and load it into ours memory so we can start using it. So I'm going to import my data set. Uh, it is the Jedi data set. Um, it is a data set that I... Uh, some might say that I made it up, but really I got in touch with my eddy, inner midi-chlorians and intuited the data from long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. Okay, so read in the data set. And then just to give you an idea of what the data set's about, I'm gonna say view D. View D, that rhymes with beauty. Maybe that helps you remember things, I don't know. So we've got several variables. One is darkness. So presumably all these Padawans or these Jedis in training, or these Jedi in training, not Jedis, because it's already plural. You don't care. Anyway, uh, darkness. Presumably, we measured the degree to which they have darkness innate in them. And then anger score, some measure of anger. Um, trust those Jedi. They're great psychometricians. Um, they know how to measure anger. Trust me. And then emotional bonds. Uh, we've also got a measure of emotional bonds. And then the age at which they started training to be a Jedi. And then we've got their midi-chlorian counts. Um, and then Jedi ID. So this is multiple uh, ratings for each Jedi. So we have repeated measures data. So presumably the Jedi are measured multiple times. And then murders. How many murders they commit? <laughs> oh, this is so morbid. All right. Um, the numbers, uh, I guess these are each year. Um, so in their first year, when they were five years old, they'd already killed somebody. Uh, what, is, what have the Jedi come to, honestly? It's not like it used to be in my day. Tell you something. Anyway, so that's our data set that we're working with. The important thing is that um, the repeated measures um, aren't spanning across the columns. Instead, the multiple time points are in different rows. And if you need a review on how to put your data in that format, I will link a video in the description where I've already talked about how to do that. So let's go ahead and move on. So that's the data set that we're working with. And I'm just going to use this to give you some ideas of how to use LMER or lemur is what I've heard people called it, call it. So we're going to start with a baseline model. So you may remember from the last video in the sequence, which I did two years ago. Anyway, uh, lemur model, uh, where was I going with that? Oh, we can start with a baseline model. What a baseline model does is it basically just fits a mean. So it's going to estimate the average darkness score um, for the entire group as well as for each individual. 
So basically there are two important components, maybe three of a LME4 equation. Okay, maybe there's more. So there's the Y, but there, there's always a Y. So that's why I'm saying it's not important. Um, and then what comes immediately after the Y are your fixed effects. So when we say one, we are telling R to fit an intercept. Why is it one? I actually don't know. It's just R's convention that if it's fitting an intercept only model, you specify it as a one. And then what we're doing is we're not fitting for the baseline model. We're not fitting any other predictors because again, we're just trying to estimate the mean. And then in the parentheses, that's where you put your random effects. So to the left side of this vertical pipe, you list all your random effects. So right here, we're saying that the intercept is a random effect, or in other words, that each Jedi's mean is going to differ from the total mean. And then we get the vertical pipe, which uh, anytime you see that in R, it usually means within. So in other words, these repeated measures are within the Jedi variable or the Jedi ID variable. So this is what we call the cluster variable. And it is the variable that indicates uh, which person is the same person or which cluster is the same, or which people belong to the same cluster, or which, which it indicates the cluster name. Um, I'm not gonna go into a lot of details on that because I have another video that I believe follows in this new playlist uh, that helps you identify what your variable is. But if it's an ID, that's going to be your Jedi, or that's going to be your cluster variable. So again, to review, you put your Y here, you put your predictors here, and to the left side of that, it specifies which ones are fixed. And then within the parentheses, anything to the left of the vertical pipe tells you which ones are random. And then anything after the vertical pipe tells you what the cluster variable is. And so if I run that, it works and I can do a summary um, and then in another video, which I think is going to be my next video, I'm going to show you how to use some of the flex plot functions to have super informative information and stuff. But for now, I'm just using the stuff available to LME4. And so when we do that, it uh, gives us a lot of information that we don't really care about at this point. Don't care about the residuals at this point. Random effects, that right there tells you um, the 3.26. That's basically like a standard deviation in your regular old uh, univariate models where um, it, it's basically interpreted exactly as a standard deviation. So right here is the fixed effect, and um, I'll go back to this here in a minute. So the fixed effect is 5, meaning on average across all the Jedis, all the Jedi, I keep doing that, their average darkness score is about five. And this 3.261 tells us that the deviation from this is about 3.2. So on average, each individual Jedi might differ from a, uh, a darkness score of five by on average 3.2. Oh, that's the variance, I'm sorry. It's actually what's next to it. So on average, they will deviate by 1.8 points. So that's a baseline model, and we'll get into more about interpreting these estimates in another video, but for now, that's how you do that. So now let me show you how you would then model different effects. So let's say you want to look at the relationship between anger and darkness in the Jedi, um, but you believe that anger is a fixed effect. So how would you model that? Well, remember, Y goes here, and then the fixed effects immediately follow that. And so anger is going to be here as a fixed effect. And then um, we're going to keep the intercept random because we almost always keep the intercept random. Uh, and then everything else is the same. So the only change here, and that's why I line these up as I did, is so you can see the difference. So the only difference here when we're fitting a fixed effect for anger is we just add it on the left side of the equation. And now if we go summary, oops, it's actually summary fixed underscore anger, and print that out, we get new estimates, uh, particularly right here. So we had an intercept, which was the mean before of five, and now it represents an intercept, or your average darkness score if your anger score is zero. And then we have a slope. So it tells you every time <clears throat> anger goes up by a point, we expect uh, your darkness score to go up by 0.37 points-ish. So that's cool. So far, um, 
with the exception of the random effects, we're interpreting this exactly like we would a regression model. And that's how fixed effects are interpreted. They're always interpreted that way. You interpret them just like you would a regression model. So it's not all that different. Uh, and then now, let's see, what was it? So now our standard deviation, 1.41, what was it before? 1.8, so it dropped a little bit. So adding the predictor of anger, um, now we would interpret this as a residual. It improved our predictions a little bit, and so our standard deviation, <coughs> excuse me, used to be 1.8, and now it's 1.4. So that's cool. Um, so that's how you do a fixed effect model. Now how would you do a random effects model? And by the way, it's kind of a misnomer. We talk about this effect is fixed, and then this effect is random. And that's misleading to say that. Anytime you have a random effect, you also have a fixed effect. There's no such thing as a model where you only have random effects and no fixed effects. So when we talk about, is this a fixed effect or is this a random effect? It would be more appropriate to say, is this a fixed effect only or is this a fixed slash random effect? And so here's how you would specify that where anger is both a fixed effect because it's outside of the parentheses on the left side there. And it is a random effect. So this model is saying there is an average anger effect on darkness, but there's also deviation within Jedi that some Jedi might have a stronger relationship between anger and darkness than others. And so if we fit that, we get this warning message. Um, and that is very common. And I'm going to make a video about that. I'm not going to explain what that means now and what you can do about it now. Um, I'm just going to move on as if that warning is not there because it still fit the model. And so if I were to go summary fixed underscore anger and our fixed effects are going to look like they did before. I mean, the estimates might be different. Let's see. What is it? Uh, yeah, it's slightly different, not much different. But again, we interpret these exactly the same way. Well, almost exactly the same way as regression. Instead of saying, um, as anger increases by this, uh, Y increases by this. Instead, you say, on average, across the Jedi, uh, as anger increased by one point, the, uh, what are we looking? Oh, darkness increases by 0.38-ish points. Um, but otherwise, you interpret exactly like regression and then, now we have multiple sources of variance, and I'm not going to talk about that now, but you still have residual variance. So that was basically like it was before. It went from 1.41 down to 1.36. So by allowing anger to vary, we are getting closer to predicting people's individual scores. So that's the basics of how you use LME, uh, the LME4 package to model mixed effects. Now let me just go ahead and do an example where maybe your hypothesis is that um, for those of you who've seen the first three Star Wars episodes, which those are the ones that came out in the 90s or whatever, um, like it was a big plot point that Jedi were not allowed to form emotional attachments because it make, made them more likely to become Sith Lords. And so um, being the uh, scientific and statistically savvy people that they are, uh, the Jedi hired me to ask, does that actually make sense? So we're going to ask the question, do emotional attachments increase darkness after controlling for anger? Or basically, um, we know that Jedi who are angry tend to become Sith Lords, but is it because of their emotional bonds or is there an independent effect of emotional bonds? So, oh, and I started writing things that aren't necessary. Anyway. So I'm going to fit that model now that matches that hypothesis. So darkness is still our outcome variable. And now we're going to list our fixed effects, which are anger and emotional bonds. And the order doesn't matter here because um, each variable is controlling for every other variable anyway. So we're going to do that. And then now we're going to say anger and emotional bonds um, have random effects as well. Um, and in a later video, we can try to test whether they ought to have uh, random effects. And then if I fit that, again, I get that convergence error, which I'm not going to go into in this video. And then I can go summary model. And now we get a similar thing to what we got before. We got fixed effects. And again, we interpret these almost exactly the same as we would a regression. So that 0 0.10897, what is that telling us? That is telling us that after controlling for anger, 
the effect of increasing emotional bonds by one point increases the Jedi's anger by 0.1 points. Um, and uh, we don't know how large of an effect it, that is because we haven't used the estimates function and we haven't visualized it, which is the topic of the next video. So tune in for the next video where I'm going to show you how to use the awesome, amazing functionality of Flexplot to visualize mixed models and to compute some estimates that might uh, make more sense and to do some model comparisons and that sort of thing. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.